Full on. after another. Full yeah. on. Oh, alhamdulillah, it's good then get the rewards of all the programs. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Try Inshallah. and get some sleep every now and then. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've forgotten what sleep is like. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And you got young kids as well? Yes, three. Oh, well, then that that's even makes it more difficult for getting sleep. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, it's starting to yeah, build I'll take up. a break after this, then I have another program that I have to get up at, after uh, Fajr in the morning. I have another one for Australia. All right. So what time is it in where you are now? Uh, 4 p.m. Oh, 4 p.m. Oh, alhamdulillah. So you got um, Maghrib coming up soon. Or maybe another mm -hmm. few more hours, yeah. Uh, Maghrib is in about four hours. All right, alhamdulillah. Well, we're on short days here, so it's good we're in winter or getting to winter, alhamdulillah. So, brother, if you want to bismillah start, it's um, there's like there's a few people on. I think everyone's set. Um, Khair. Inshallah. I'll, I'll just introduce. Oh, do you want? I'll just introduce. Um, Assalamualaikum, everyone. Uh, Muhammad Thompson from Voice of Islam. Welcome to another program. Um, today we've got uh, brother Yusha Evans from Minneapolis, USA, and he's going to give us a enlightening talk today. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Welcome to brother Yusha. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope all is well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, I'll let you move straight into it because I know your time is short. So, we want to get a nice, concise uh, talk today, inshallah, so you can get back and have some rest. Inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> Khayran. <clears throat> um, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. You know, we're talking about, you know, brotherhood and sisterhood, strengthening the bonds that, that, that unite us. This is extremely important, not only in the month of Ramadan, but after Ramadan, this is, uh, you know, a topic that I've tried to press upon uh, very frequently because, you know, the more that we learn to have love for one another, uh, the more that, you know, we will uh, grow as an ummah, the more that we will find that, um, that, that, that bonds, that, bonds this together as an ummah insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran inni hadihi umatukum ummatan wahida wa anna rabbukum fa'abudun that this ummah your ummah is one ummah. This ummah your ummah is one ummah and I am your Lord therefore worship me. You know the Quran is the first book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that sets up the idea of a, a, a universal ummah, a universal nation. It was a new and everlasting concept that the Quran introduced, which defined its meaning until the day of judgment. It is a broad and balanced concept that is hinged upon the unity of our creed, the unity of our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through tawheed. It is the first book and re message to reach out to mankind. <clears throat> with all of mankind through the universal call, setting aside all forms of sectarianism, racism, tribalism, making us equal amongst each other. As the Prophet mm -hmm. said, the best of you are those who have the most taqwa. Other than that, there is no difference between you in the eyes of Allah. It addresses humanity at large without regard for time and place. Umma. The word Ummah is mentioned in the Quran more than 50 times. This idea that we are a nation, we are a people, all of us one together. And in this nation, it is divided into two categories. You have the Ummatul Da'wa, the people who need to hear the call of Islam, who need to hear the message, and Ummatul Ijaba. These are the people who have accepted the call um, and who should be the ones doing the Da'wa or doing the call to uh, people to bring them into this beautiful fold and this beautiful religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam through many verses in the Quran. Some of the most beautiful and important ones Allah Jalla wa ala tells us, ikhwa, that indeed the believers are but ikhwa. This word ikhwa means more than just, you know, brothers and sisters. Ikhwa is like relations. They are related. They are united. They are together. They are closer in relation than even the bonds of family in some senses. Mm -hmm. Because you have, you know, times where you have people who come into Islam who have family members who are not Muslim. The relationship between the believers is stronger than that tie. Is stronger that tie because it's bonded through faith. We find this in 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 some of the statements of the companions, radiyallahu anhum radhaum ajma'in, where the the tabi'in asked, "How did you treat the Prophet They explained. He said, "Well, if he were with us, you know, we would have carried him on our shoulders, etc." 
He was responded to and said, you don't know what you would have done in our circumstances. Some of us had to fight against our own family members, our own brothers, our own fathers, our own mm -hmm. uncles over this message of Tawheed. You know, so you, you're growing up in, a, in an Islamic environment. You don't know how to equate it to us when it comes to the way that we dealt with Islam. Allah Jalla also, also tells us, uh, the Prophet وسلم, excuse me, said in a hadith that a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. The Muslims are brothers to another Muslim. They do not harm them or forsake them. That brothers are brothers to another Muslim means sister as well in that context. They do not harm them nor forsake them. The Prophet والسلام, also said, Allah is with and helps his slaves. Allah is with and helps his slaves as long as as he is with and helps his brother as long as he is with and helps his brother the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that the parable of the believers the parable of the believers in relation to mercy and kindness and compassion they have for one another is like that of the body. This is a very famous hadith that the believers in relation to one another when it comes to and remember look at what he's saying when it comes to mercy kindness and compassion that they have for one another is like that of the body when an organ falls ill, the rest of the body is in pain. Number one, when the body falls, when one part of the body falls ill, the entire body feels that pain. You know, uh, your whole body feels that pain. If you cut your finger, you feel that pain. Yes, you know it's coming from your finger, but your entire body responds to that pain. Your entire body starts producing white blood cells and things of that nature that will, you know, help to, to, to cure that cut or cure that illness. If you have a, a virus that gets inside of your body, your entire body will, your entire immune system will start. It'll start taking away energy from other parts of the body and start putting it towards the immune system to produce white blood cells, et cetera, to counteract that illness or that sickness or that virus. The body responds with fever and sleeplessness. So the Prophet وسلم, is saying that we as an ummah, as a body, should respond the same way that the body responds. And that we are united together. And if one part of the ummah is hurting, if one part of the body of Muslims is hurting, then the rest of the body is feels that pain and responds to it as well. The Prophet وسلم, he said that the believer is like to each other they are like a building each part structurally holding up the other parts each part structurally holding up and 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 the other parts and he went like this he did this with his fingers that the believers are like a building their structural integrity is that they support one another and now what we see today in the world we see a lot of you know infighting we see a lot of you know uh negativity toxicity all kinds of stuff that's going on what is that doing that struck that makes the, the the body of Muslims the found the house structurally unsound. It makes it weak. It makes it weak. If there are load bearing walls inside of a house that become weak, the whole structure of the house becomes weak. So we have to make sure that we are treating one another and we are dealing with one another the way that we would like to be dealt with in, in like this house. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that there would be seven people. And I talked about this in one of my other talks in, in the month of Ramadan uh, about the people who will be under the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, on the day where there will be no shade. One of those categories of people are two people who love one another solely for the sake of Allah. Two people who love one another solely for the sake of Allah and they meet and depart based upon that love. Hmm. They meet and depart based upon that love. What this is trying to instill and teach us is to have love for one another, to have true love for one another. There's a hadith of the Prophet والسلام, where he said that there was a man who was going to visit another brother, another Muslim. And an angel came and asked him for what reason was he going to visit his brother? You know, does he owe you something? You know, do you have some worldly gain from him? Is there something, you know, that you need to be getting from him? He said, no, I'm just going to visit him because I love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angel responded who had come in the form of a person and said, know that the one whom you love your brother for his sake loves you in return. Know that the one whom you love your brother for his sake loves you in return. So this is a way to not only gain the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of of judgment but it earns us the love of Allah and the Prophet والسلام, said that when Allah loves someone he communicates that love to the angels who surround his throne that I love so and so so you love them I love so and so because 
you love so-and-so because I love them. And then those angels pass that down to lower angels in rank. And then those angels in the lower heavens pass that on to all of the creation of the earth until the entire earth and all of its creation begin to love that person because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us that. Also, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out on that day when he's asking for people to come under his shade, he will call out and he will say, where are those who loved one another for the sake of my glory? Where are those who loved one another for the sake of my glory? Today I have gifted them with a shade On this day where there is no other shade So may we learn to love one another For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In a hadith al-Qudsi <clears throat> Reported by Imam Ahmed uh, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said That Allah says My love I make it obligatory My love I have made it obligatory And it is due to those who love one another for my sake My love is obligatory And is due from me on those who visit one another for my sake. My love is obligatory and due to those who help one another for my sake. My love is obligatory and due upon those whose hearts are free from grudges and who uphold the ties between one another solely for my sake. SubhanAllah, look at all of the amazing benefits that we get for the love that we have from one another. We gain the love of the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah Azza wa Jal. And when Allah loves you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, will make your life full of joy, full of peace, full of the things that we seek out in the deen. Um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, and this is narrated in the collection of Imam Muslim by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. You will not enter paradise until you believe. This is an important hadith about loving one another for the sake of Allah Jalla You will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Look at how important it is for us to have the bonds of love between one another. Hmm. It is so important that the Prophet Sallallahu hmm. said that our entry into paradise is tied to our love for one another. He said, you will not enter paradise until you believe. And then he tied our belief to loving one another and you will not have true belief until you love one another and then he said can i guide you to something that will help you to love one another he said spread salams between each other <laughs> spread salams and peace genuine care and concern for one another subhanallah mm -hmm. our entire the prophet وسلم, in this hadith tied our faith tied our belief to loving one another and then tied that belief to entrance into jannah so our love for one another can be our very ticket to jannah and another the hadith al-qudsi Recorded by Turmidi. Uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radi Allahu an said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah ta'ala said, those who love each other for the sake of my glory, those who love each other for the sake of me, they will be upon pulpits of light on the day of judgment. I will place them upon pulpits of light and they will be the envy. They, they will be envied. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> they will be envied by the shuhada and the Anbiya. Subhanallah. They will be envied by the prophets and they will be envied by the martyrs, the people who went mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to Jannah with no account. Yet the people who love one another for the sake of Allah, they will be placed on such high pinnacles that those people, the prophets and messengers and the shuhada will be envious of the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the believers who learn to love one another solely for the sake of the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't think we should have more from the love for one another, you're missing the entire boat. Mm. You're missing the entire mm. picture. Another hadith of Qudsi recorded by Imam Ahmed rahim, alayhi, um, by Mu'adh ibn Jabal as well. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah Ta'ala says, my love is obligatory for those who love one another for my sake. My love is obligatory for those who sit with one another for my sake. And my love is obligatory for those who visit one another for my sake and who spend on each other for my sake. So having this love and spending on one another for the sake of Allah alone, visiting one another for the sake of Allah alone, helping one another for the sake of Allah alone, all of this is a reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an narrated that the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam told us, Verily there are some people amongst the servants of Allah who are neither prophets nor martyrs, but whom the prophets and martyrs will envy on because of their status on the day of judgment. And they said, O messenger of Allah, tell us who these people are. 
You see, this was their response. Tell us who these people mm -hmm. are so we can try to be like them. Be like, yeah. He said, they are the people who love one another for the, by the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because of family relations, not because of wealth. They love each other sincerely for the sake of Allah. By Allah, there will be light upon their faces and they will be sitting upon light and they will have no fear when the people are afraid and they will not be sad on the day when people are in grief. Subhanallah. I mean, look at this, brothers and sisters, this, there's so much to be gained just having sincere love for one another. Not only could it fix so many problems that we find in the Ummah today, so much of the, the, the dissension that we find in the Ummah today, so much of the, the, you know, the, 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 the lines that are drawn between us could be solved by loving one another, but we will also earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will also earn the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. We will also earn pulpits of light, become the envy of all of the anbiya, envy of the shuhada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this ability to have love for one another. Recorded by Imam Ahmad, as Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu wa reported the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, there has come, and I, th th this is, I've, I've saved this one kind of towards the end because it's, it's a warning. It's a warning to the, and this was stated by the Prophet ﷺ at the time of the best generation. At the time of the best generation. Now look at us today and look how this warning fits us so well. The Prophet ﷺ said, there has come to you the disease of the nations from before. There has come to you a, the disease of the nations of the past. What is that disease? He said it's envy and hatred of one another. It is envy and hatred of one another. He said, and hatred is the razor. Our hate for one another, the hate that we spew towards one another. He said it's like a razor. He said, but it's not a razor that shaves the hair. It's a razor that shaves the religion. It shaves the religion. It cuts the religion from the person. By the one, and he swore, by the one whose hands is the soul of Muhammad sallallahu when, Whenever the Prophet والسلام, wanted to make a sincere, serious oath, he would always say, I swear by the one in whose hands is the soul of Muhammad sallallahu You will not believe until you love one another. And then he went on to say, you know, can I show you that which if you do it, it will help you to love one another. Spread salams amongst each other. So brothers and sisters, not only can we, gain these amazing things by loving one another the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shade of his throne jannah pulpits of life the envy of the shuhada and the anbiya but the opposite the hate that we see ourselves spewing towards one another the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said is it is, it is a disease and it is like a razor that shaves our religion it is like a razor that shaves away at our very religion our very religion and lastly uh this is narrated by imam ahmed as well by Khalid ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa asked a question. And I'm going to ask you this question as well. He asked a question that I'm going to ask you. He said, do you love paradise? Do you love paradise? And this is a, a you know, a rhetorical question <laughs> because there's not a single believer out there that will say they don't love paradise. Yeah. He said, do you love paradise? So the companion responded, of course, yes. He said, then love for your brother what you love for yourself. Love for your brother what you love for yourself. This is... <laughs> This is so, so simple. You know, the very mm -hmm. simple, what they call it, the golden rule. Love for, uh, uh, doing to others as you would have done unto you. Good. Love for your brother what you love for yourself. Uh, it's such a simple golden rule, but it's so weighty and so important because in acting it, in actuality, is extremely difficult. To, to try to have love for each other. And what does it mean, love for each other for the sake of Allah? It means that we love each other despite our differences. We love each other despite language barrier. We love each other despite cultural barriers. We love each other despite, you know, small indifferences that we have. You know, we love each other in spite of everything that could divide us. Everything that we're using in this day and age to divide ourselves. In spite of all of that, we decide to look beyond it. We decide to look past it. We decide to look over it and love each other for the sake of Allah alone. And I and, and I've seen that I've seen that when I've traveled in the world and, and especially in, 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 you know, in the Muslim world in some places, 
overseas where you know we might not speak the same language i've met you know brothers uh, in in uh, in 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 medina and in mecca that 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 knew me from you know seeing me on the internet whatever we we didn't we really might not even have spoke the same language you didn't know each other we have completely different lives completely different backgrounds mm -hmm. but in that instance we hug each other we love each other for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is beautiful that is something that islam gives to us that no other way of life is offering there's no other alternative out there that is offering this solution. And this is what, you know, Malcolm X uh, saw when he went to Hajj. When he went to mm. Hajj, he saw all of the things that he was struggling for. You know, the civil rights movement to try to, you know, uplift the African-Americans and, 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 and get them out of, you know, uh, all of the ills that they were going through, which they are still struggling through today in the West. He saw that this Islam, this real Islam, not this you know, nation of Islam, the thing that I was following, but this Islam where we stand next to each other side by side with brothers from all over the world, all different colors and languages. He said, this Islam that creates loves and bonds between people, irregardless of their nationality, irregardless of their color, irregardless of their language, this can heal the world and that is the letter he sent back from mecca that this is what the world needs the world needs islam it can heal it but in order for the world to be healed by islam we as muslims as believers need to use the medicine on ourselves mm -hmm. we are spending a lot of time giving that medicine out you know handing the medicine out left right and center doing our da'wah spreading the deen all of this but what we need to do is take some of that medicine and apply it to ourselves apply it to ourselves, especially when it comes with the way that we treat one another, with the way that we treat one another. Because for sure, on the day of judgment, you can get away with so many things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you for many things, but we will all have to answer for what we have done to each other. We will all have to answer to the, for the things that we have done to one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us for mm -hmm. any ill that we've done to another human being, mm -hmm. any ill that we've done to another Muslim. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us mercy and allow us to heal those bonds between us for things that we have done to one another. Because those are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed himself from being able to forgive us for until we settle them, either in this life or on the day when we meet him. So we need to learn to love one another. If a Muslim has wronged you in the past, let it go. Let it go. Forgive them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it go. Forgive them for the sake of Allah. Even if you don't know them anymore and never met them again, remember to forgive them. Because for sure, and I'm going to finish with this, we should treat one another the same way that we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat us yes. on the day we stand before him. We are going to stand before him and be begging him to be merciful with us, begging him to be easy on us, begging him to be just with us, begging him to have some ease upon us. So we should learn to try to treat one another the same way that we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat us on the day we meet him. Because if Allah treats us the way we treat one another, we are done. If Allah jalla wa ala treats us the way that we treat one another, we are finished. We are finished. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease these afflictions that we find within our ummah, these divisions within our ummah, these chasms within our ummah, and allow us to learn to love one another solely for his sake, learn to love one another solely for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless all of you. May Allah grant you safety, security, peace. May Allah grant you the most beautiful last 10 nights in Ramadan. May Allah grant you this forgiveness. These are the nights where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases people from hellfire. May Allah allow you to be one of those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees from the fire for perpetuity and make you of the people of Jannah insha'Allah ta'ala. Barakallahu fikum jami'a. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Brother Yusha, for this very concise and hard-hitting um, talk. Uh, it's what we all need. It's a shot in the arm we need now. Um, like you said, the medicine. We all this, need it. Yep. We, this, is, this is a vaccination we need against the, the hatred, the envy and things like that. So we, we need to build up this our, our strength and build up the, our, our you know, whole thing against all all this all these sort of things, of hatred, envy and, and the division. The division, it's throughout the world and, you know, like you said, go to each night. We need to concentrate and go to bed without any hatred or, or dislike about anyone, and forgive everyone. Inshallah, 
And we pray, like Brother Yusha said, that everyone gets the best out of this Ramadan. We think about what's been said. If you haven't remembered it all, please go onto our channel. It's, it's going to be up there still for a long time. And just watch it and watch it and pass it on to others. We need this. We need to get our Ummah back. We need to be the, the leading light. We've got, the, we've got the answers for the problems in this world. We just need to sort it out ourselves and, 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 and then be living it and showing it to everyone else, inshallah. Yeah, we need to apply it in order for us to say it. that yes. you know that that our islam is a solution to the world's problems we need to first demonstrate that exactly we, we can apply it and solve our own problems be the best examples not the ones in the newspapers for the wrong reasons you know fighting yep. in fighting amongst ourselves over petty things what greed power money this is all going to go Allah's is going to this is going to be nothing inside of allah in the day of judgment we need to be showing what we um what we can do you know what islam is and show it first in ourselves and then show it to the rest of the world because that's the answers for all the problems in the world, inshallah. Inshallah um, ta'ala. Um, there's just a question, brother. You should know yep, if you've seen I'll take it. Can one, you... or, one or two, yep. Yes, a question on um, jealousy. How, how can we um, <laughs> overcome jealousy, inshallah? Well, one, one easy way to overcome jealousy, the Prophet ﷺ advised us to look at those who are below us and, and not those who are above us when it when it means like it comes to status in this world and things that we have it, you know i i know you know in the in the era of 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 celebrities and 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 movies and social media you know where everybody's putting on the best life that they possibly can and showing the best of everything that's going on number one we should all know what's a facade that's not the real yes. deal it's not real uh, social media is just like watching a hollywood movie it is all scripted um so the pro the advice the Prophet والسلام, taught us to 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 look at those who are below us and not those who are above us. And for me, one advice I always have: if I if I see somebody and I feel those feelings of like envy and jealousy, like you know, like oh, they're doing so much better than me, I remind myself to make du'a for that person mm -hmm. if they're Muslim, you know, to make du'a for them. And if they're not, remind them that this life is temporary. Remind myself that this life is temporary, and and, and what they've been given here. They might have nothing in the hereafter. But for our brothers and sisters, we remind ourselves to make dua for them. May Allah grant them more. May Allah grant mm. them more. If you see mm. somebody, one of your brothers and sisters, and you have that feeling of envy and jealousy, maybe because they, you feel like they're doing better than you in life. Number one, you don't know what they're going and dealing with behind closed doors. But mm. number two, make dua that Allah grants them more. Because when you make dua, the Prophet wasallam. He said, when you make dua for your brother or sister, and it's a genuine dua, there are angels who are listening to that dua, and they respond, Amin wa ayak, Amin wa ayak, Amin and to you also. So you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant your brother or sister more and give them more. The angels whose duas are go straight to the heavens respond by saying, Amin and may Allah give you more as well. So this is a very easy and simple little method you can institute to try to help yourself overcome uh, jealousy, inshaAllah ta'ala. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Um, I don't think we had any other questions come up yet. No worries. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. I have to run as well. Yeah, so. I know. Jazakallah. And appreciate the, um, the the time you spent with us. Alhamdulillah. It's always My very powerful and concise. Forgive me that it's short and uh, the schedule's been crazy. But this oh, Ramadan alhamdulillah. Just but it's this madness. is what we need. Short and bang to the point. Hit it, hit it and, you know, wake people up. And that needs to, you know, including myself, you know, it's the first thing for myself to look at these sort of things and look how we can improve ourselves so then we can be a good of others, inshallah. Jazakallah inshallah. khair. Thank, thank you, everyone, well, for watching. Yeah. We hope to see Brother Yusha again very soon with us. I know he's very busy. So Jazakallah. We wish him all the best for his other online programs he's doing through the world. Right. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.